This section looks at file system navigation and management with BRP. The file system represents the underlying platform on which BRP operates and where system files are stored within the physical storage devices of the product. The capability to navigate and manage this file system is necessary to ensure effective management of the configuration files, VRP software upgrades, and ensure that the physical devices contained within each product are well maintained. So upon completion of this section, it's generally expected that trainees will be able to successfully navigate the device file system, manipulate the file system files and folders, as well as manage Huawei router and switch storage devices. The file system houses the files used by the device within directories within the device's local storage. The file system can be managed through various commands that allow files to be created, deleted, modified or even renamed, as well as allow the contents of a file to be viewed. We show here the main commands that should be used to view and navigate the file system hierarchy. Users commonly will begin at the root of the file storage location which is equivalent to the top level of the directory, from which point all top level directories can be seen. The cd command allows us to change the directory and to drill down through each directory to the directory level we wish to reach, that contains the files we wish to use. It can also be used to return to the upper levels of directories as necessary. The pwd command is used to identify the current directory that the user is located. The IR is used to view the content of the current level and the more command allows the file content to be viewed. We show here the use of the DIR command for a user currently at the root level of the flash storage location, through which we are able to identify directories and files within the root level. Here we see a single directory represented by the D value in the attributes list and two files in the form of a text file and a system configuration file. It is possible for users to also manipulate the contents of the file system, and so we demonstrate here the creation and removal of directories from the file system. The two commands used to achieve this are the mkdir to make a directory and rmdir to remove a directory. Before a directory can be removed, however, the directory must be empty, so any files found within the directory must be moved or deleted firstly. So we see here an example of how a directory named test is created within the directory in which the user is currently located. Using the dir command, we are able to verify the creation of the directory named test and the time and date when the directory was created. Other forms of file manipulation involve the duplication of files, moving files to other locations and the renaming of files. In order to copy a file, the command copy is used, followed by the file name of the file to be copied and the name of the duplicate file. If the original file and the copied file have the same file name, the user will be prompted with a warning that the existing file will be replaced. The move command is used to move a file from one directory to another within the same storage device, for which the user should indicate the name of the file to be moved and the name of the file once it is moved. The rename command allows the name of the file or directory to be changed and is demonstrated here using the created test directory, in which the command rename test Huawei is used to change the directory name to Huawei. So we can again verify the change through the dir command. In terms of file deletion, there are a number of commands that support this operation as we show here. The delete command is used to effectively erase a file from the file system. However, the process will in fact transfer the file to a recycle bin from where deleted files can be retrieved if necessary. The command that is used to retrieve a file that's been deleted from the recycle bin is the undelete command. If it is wished that the file be permanently deleted, the delete command together with the unreserved parameter should be used. A file in the recycle bin can also be permanently deleted using the reset recycle bin command. The example here shows the use of the delete command to permanently delete a configuration file in the flash storage device. The dir command verifies its deletion. Configuration files represent a list of stored configuration commands and parameter settings that are applied to the device's operation. These are generally stored within the flash memory of a device and loaded into RAM during the boot process to allow the commands to be applied. Changes to the configuration are stored in a current configuration file 
that when saved will be copied to the saved configuration file. This saved configuration file will only be created once the configuration is saved. Otherwise, a default configuration is used that applies the default system parameters. Viewing the two configuration files that are being used by VRP is achieved through the display current configuration and display safe configuration commands. The display current configuration will display commands that have been configured and are currently operational within VRP. If the device is restarted, the current configuration file will be lost and replaced with the safe configuration file configuration if a safe configuration file exists. It is therefore necessary to save the configuration if the contents of the current configuration file are to be maintained. If the saved configuration file does not exist, a notice will inform of the fact. We show here the typical result of using these display commands. In order to save the configuration, the save command is used. We demonstrate this command here from the user view, following which the save configuration will be stored to the default save configuration file location known as vrpcfg.zip, since the file is compressed. If the configuration is to be stored in a file other than the default save configuration file, the file name of the new save configuration file should be included after the save command. The save process will prompt for confirmation, to which the yes response should be given to complete the save. The display startup command can be used to view the configuration files currently being used by VRP. The previous save command will save the save configuration file to the SD1 storage location by default, and this is reflected in the startup and next startup configuration file output. The current VRP image being used is represented by the startup system software output. In cases where the configuration file to be used is different from the default save configuration file, the startup save configuration command can be used. The saved configuration file may be a file that has been either saved on the local device under a different file name to the default saved configuration file name of vrpcfg.zip or may have been retrieved from a remote location and stored on the device. We see here the startup save configuration file to be used has been saved to the flash storage location with the file name of Huawei. Following configuration, we can again use the display startup command to confirm the changes. Since the router in this case has not yet been reloaded, the current startup configuration file is shown to be the current configuration file. However, we can now also see that following the next startup, the new Huawei configuration file will be applied. Prior to saving the changes of a current configuration file, it is possible to verify the changes that are to be saved through the compare configuration command. This allows a line-by-line -line comparison of changes between the current configuration file and the next startup configuration file. If a configuration file is specified in the command, the current configuration file will be compared against the configuration file that has been specified. If the configured contents of a saved configuration file are no longer required, the file can be deleted using the reset save configuration command. This will effectively remove the device startup configuration file from storage. The user will be prompted, however, before erasing of the configuration file is performed, to which it is expected that approval be given. Configuration files may be stored in a variety of locations, which varies from product to product. The S5700 switch, for example, by default will store configuration files within the flash memory, whilst the AR2200 series router will default to the SD card storage location, or SD1, when saving configuration files. It is also possible to attach external storage in the form of USB in order to save and load configuration files. When erasing a single configuration file, the reset save configuration command is used. If the entire storage location of a device is to be erased, however, the format command is used along with the storage location to be formatted. It is generally recommended that these commands not be used unless it is absolutely necessary since erased files in a formatted storage location cannot be recovered. The examples shown here demonstrate the typical commands used to clear the flash memory and SD card locations. When failures occur within the storage device, the fixed disk command can be used to attempt to repair the errors. Typically, the device will notify that an error has occurred and prompt the user to use fixed disk to recover the integrity of the storage location. Again, we show here the use of the fixed disk command for both the flash and SD card storage locations. So in summary, then we have a couple of questions here. The first asks, 
What does the D in the DRWX attribute of the file system represent? Well, the D in the attribute list represents a directory in the storage location in which multiple files may be located. The CD command may be used together with the listed directory to specify the path in order to reach any files contained within the directory. Secondly then, how can a configuration file stored within the file system of a device be implemented for use by the device? Well, the command startup save configuration, followed by the name of the configuration file to be used is specified, along with the storage location of the save configuration file to be used, in order to identify the configuration file as the file to be used at next startup. The display startup command can be used then to verify that the command has taken effect.